There is a bird that has a tail longer than its body. Finding one here at this time of the year shouldn't be really difficult at all. This is the start of the breeding season and this is their nesting place. A kingfisher that offers frogs to impress females. Another very important component of a kingfisher's habitat is a perch just like this one. It is where the drama takes place. And a smaller kingfisher that is an expert fisher. Right in front of me is probably the most famous of all kingfishers. In this episode, we explore the lives of three amazing little birds. When we hear the word wildlife, the images that come to mind are those of pristine and exotic places, far away from the human settlement, away from the towns and cities we live in, teeming with wild animals. But often it is the case that some of the most beautiful wildlife reside just around the corner, in very close proximity to us, such as this particular patch of land. As a child, I used to spend countless hours here. This used to be my version of a rainforest, and it holds a special place in my heart. Not just for its resemblance to a rainforest, but for one bird in particular. This bird that I'm after is special. I remember the first time I saw it, I was instantly captivated by its beauty. Finding one here at this time of the year shouldn't be really difficult at all. This is the start of the breeding season and this is their nesting place. I can already hear their calls but but it's a thick, thick place and seeing one really takes time. I see a white flash but is it the bird that I'm after? Yes, it is. This stunning bird with a tail longer than its body is the paradise flycatcher. This particular one is a male. Such a lovely bird. A good start, but I want to get close to these birds and their lives. For that to happen, I need to find an active nest. This is a paradise flycatcher's nest from the previous year. It has taken the beatings from the elements and here you can see all the pliable material that it uses, the small twigs and, and the spider web. What I need is something like this, but from this year, a fresh one, an active one, where I can see them raise their chicks and raise a family. Paradise flycatcher female just flew from a nest over there. It may have chicks in there or eggs, we don't know. I'm anxious to find out, so I get my hide. This seems a perfect place to set up a hide. The nest is down there, and if I become invisible here, I can really get close to the lives of these beautiful birds. One of the top priorities when filming birds close to their nests is not to disturb them. 
A hide like this one helps me to blend in with the surroundings and film undetected. The nest is an active one. It has four tiny helpless chicks in there. At this age, the, the chicks are really vulnerable to the temperature fluctuations. They haven't developed those down feathers yet, so the parents must be coming any minute now. I just need to be patient enough. Father visits the nest. Keeping the chicks well fed is a full-time job. Male and female take turns feeding them. Paradise flycatchers are dimorphic birds. Securing a partner is one thing. Feeding tiny chicks requires an altogether different set of skills. Dad seems to be liking those skills. Thankfully, his partner is much more experienced in such an intricate task. I'm leaving this family for now and will be returning in a few days. Meanwhile, I want to meet an other old friend of mine. Totally different, but equally fascinating. Now, if you are a white-throated kingfisher and you're looking for a place to raise a family, this is the perfect place. This is the prime real estate. Unlike the paradise flycatchers, the white-throated kingfishers are cavity nesting birds. Their nest is basically a tunnel excavated in a vertical earth bank just like this one usually two to three feet long ending in a breeding chamber and this stream offers them with the prey item they feed on now this is the other reason why this place is such an ideal habitat, especially for the white-throated kingfisher. White-throated mainly feeds on crustaceans and, and frogs and small insects. This stream has it in abundance. <laughs> this is a feisty little guy. I mean, I, I wonder how the kingfisher handles it. I'm gonna let this little guy go now. Now, another very important component of a kingfisher's habitat is a perch just like this one. It's from here that a kingfisher would make its territorial calls to attract females and defend its territory from rival males. It's also from here that it would scan the streams for the available food and keep its eye on the nest, which is right there in the earth bank. It is where the drama takes place. I have set up my hive right there. Let's see if I could get some close intimate shots. The white-throated kingfishers become particularly noisy on the onset of breeding season. Their loud calls advertise their presence over long distances. This one is excited. In its courtship display, a male shows off the white patches on its throat and wings. To entice females, it also offers mouth-watering snacks.
But to be successful, it also takes some luck. All this effort and nothing to show for it must be heartbreaking. But a new dawn brings new sun. And new friends. The small chirps are a female's way of responding to males. The male wastes no time and offers a bug as a nuptial gift. She follows his lead. He is quite motivated and has already chosen a nesting site. Confident in his achievements, he makes his move. She is not convinced yet. She wants to make sure everything is just perfect. In his absence, she checks out the nest. The male has not given up yet. Females can be very fussy over the size of nuptial gift. He needs to impress with a better one. The small fish in the river attracts another kind of kingfisher. A kingfisher that truly lives up to its name. Right in front of me is probably the most famous of all kingfishers. The common kingfisher. It is a small bird, way smaller than the white throated kingfisher. It is a specialist. It feeds almost exclusively on fish. Right now, it is at its favorite fishing spot, actively hunting fish. And I am in the perfect place to see it from up close. Fairly camouflaged, I try to move even closer. Despite its colorful plumage, the common kingfishers are rarely seen. Being this close to one hunting is actually something extraordinary. A specialist bird needs to have a special design. It has a perfect streamlined beak and special adaptations in the eyes to see its prey underwater.
Oops. But having the right tools for the job doesn't guarantee success. He probably needs to change tactics. And maybe focus. A little more. Once captured, the fish gets a hammering. It is swallowed head first. Back at the Paradise Flycatcher's nest, things have changed. The chicks have grown. They're almost unrecognizable from the last time I saw them. The food intake of chicks has increased. So has their excretion. For the parents, nest sanitation is another challenge now. For them, it's a back-breaking, never-ending labor. It is now beyond the capacity of the nest to accommodate the grown-up chicks. The next morning, when I visit the place, I find the nest empty. The last evening I left, the chicks were right there in the nest. The nest is intact though, which means that nothing bad must have happened and they... they they are fledged. The parents are on a high alert. They are making all sorts of noises, their alarm calls. They, they would come really close to you. What they want is, they want you to follow them so that they would lead you away from the chicks. And the chicks are really difficult to see also. They are very tiny. And uh, in a close canopy like this, it is really difficult to spot them. But then, in the thickets, I spot three of them. The fourth one, a bit more adventurous, has wandered a little farther from the nest.
The white-throated kingfishers have also been busy raising a family. In just a matter of one month, the chicks grow from tiny lumps of meat to almost the size of their parents, except that they are a little duller and their beaks are black. The parents have done a good job but their duties are not over yet. Before long, the chicks will have learned to catch for themselves. Till then, the parents will take good care. Time has run out for me. Knowing the fact that I'm leaving these lives in safe hands, I leave satisfied.